In this video from IT Free Training, I will look at some of the limitations of Hyper-V. As you will see, these limits are quite high, making Hyper-V a very scalable technology. In order to run Hyper-V, you need to first have a 64-bit OS. A 64-bit CPU is required and thus a 64-bit OS to go with it. Hyper-V was first added to Windows in Windows Server 2008. Each OS after this has Hyper-V built in. But in the case of Windows Server 2008, you need to be running the standard, enterprise, or data center edition in order to use Hyper-V. Windows Server 2012 does not have the enterprise edition, so you will need standard or data center edition to run Hyper-V. For Windows 8 or Windows 8.1, you require the Pro or Enterprise Edition. Microsoft also has a free edition of Hyper-V called Hyper-V Server 2012 R2. This is a free download and does not cost anything to run. You will, of course, need to correctly license any OS that runs in a virtual machine on that server. The Hyper-V edition is a scaled-down version of Windows Server and includes some basic file and storage services as well as the Remote Desktop Services role. Even though it has the Remote Desktop Services role, the server itself only runs the server core interface. For this reason, the only interface you can use is the command prompt, either by using the console or from a remote desktop session. You are able to administer the server from remote, however, using administration tools. I will next have a look at the hardware limitations of Hyper-V in Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2. For the host, Hyper-V will support up to 4 terabytes of memory. If you run Hyper-V on Windows 8, this will be reduced to 512 gigabytes, as that is all Windows 8 will support. Next, Hyper-V will support 320 logical processors. Logical processors essentially means the number of cores. So, if you are using CPUs with 4 cores, 320 logical processors would allow you to have 80 CPUs in that server. The next limitation is 2048 virtual processors. A virtual processor is seen by the virtual machine just like a physical CPU would be seen by a physical computer. These virtual processors are then assigned to virtual machines of which Hyper-V can support 1024 of them. The virtual machines are limited to 1 terabyte of RAM and 64 virtual processors. You can see that even though there are limitations, the limits are very high and should not cause any problem to the average administrator. I will now have a closer look at the virtual machines limitation. For the virtual machine, the virtual disk is limited to 64 terabytes using the new VHDX format. The VHDX format is only available on Windows Server 2012 and Windows 8. If you are running Hyper-V on an older operating system, you will need to use the VHD format, which is limited to 2040 gigabytes. Hyper-V supports four IDE disks. One of these disks must be the startup disk. In other words, contains the operating system that you will boot from. If you need more than four disks, you can install up to four SCSI controllers. Each SCSI controller can have a maximum of 64 disks, meaning that you can have up to 256 SCSI disks in the system. In order to use SCSI disks, integration services must be installed. Integration services is a collection of device drivers supplied by Microsoft, which, when installed, improves the performance of virtual machines and allows additional features, like the ability to use SCSI controllers. Next, each virtual machine supports up to four fiber channel adapters. This allows a virtual machine to connect directly to a physical fiber card installed on the host machine. The fiber card allows the virtual machine to connect to services like a SAN. Lastly, each virtual machine supports 12 network adapters. Four of these network adapters are legacy network adapters. Legacy network adapters do not have the same performance as the other type of network adapters. However, they do offer additional support like PXE support, which allows booting from the network. This covers all the virtual machine limitations. The last limitation that I will look at is cluster limitations. Hyper-V supports clusters of up to 64 nodes. One cluster can support up to 8,000 virtual machines. There is a limitation of 1,024 virtual machines per server or node. 
However, if you were to use 8,000 virtual machines, they would be spread out amongst the nodes in the cluster. That's it for the limitations of Hyper-V. As you can see from this video, the limits are quite high and should not cause any issues for the average administrator. Even with a limitation of 12 network cards per virtual machine, you would have difficulty finding a physical computer that would support that many network cards. So, in some cases, you can achieve results in virtual machines that would be difficult to achieve with a physical computer. Thanks for watching this video on looking at the limitations of Hyper-V. I hope to see you in the other free videos from us in this course and others. Thanks and see you next time.